could not be answered, not because we don't have the answer, but because it is not a recession. It's not a recession. Rather, what we are going through is a fundamental transformation. It is a fundamental restructuring of the global economic landscape on a scale that we have not seen for decades. We asked ourselves three very fundamental questions. The first question is, where is disposable income going? The second question is, where are jobs being created? And the third question is, what is the MO, the modus operandi? What is driving this new economy? And we determined that there are nine growth areas of this new economy. And they are all about altered dimensionality, and that dimension is space. But everything is just getting faster and faster. And we need to know how to value time. If you think of what a luxury is, and I go back to the economic equation that I laid out, time is the new luxury proposition. And again, knowing how to leverage this is going to be critical. But we are learning so much more now through neuroimaging, through brain research, about what makes us tick, what makes us who we are. This is giving rise to something called neuroeconomics, and we're going to be hearing a lot more about neuroeconomics in the coming years. This is the study of really how things resonate in our brains. How does brand labeling architecture resonate in our brains? How do colors resonate in our brains? This is a study of semiotics, the study of color, symbols, images, how that resonates on a more visceral level. The future is going to happen with or without you. That is the one certainty. It's going to happen. Change is going to happen whether you like it or not. So get on board or be left behind because these things are coming. Everything is connected. We are all connected and we are all connected to that future. So for all of you, I want you to use your imaginations to take you on a journey, a journey into that future, the one that you want to create and design for yourselves. We are living at a time, at the edge of wonder, a time when reality and fantasy are colliding more and more each day. What's your take on 4D printing? It's so exciting when you think about the fourth dimension being time and overlaying that in terms of what's happening with 3D printing. I think uh, one of the most exciting areas for me is when you marry it with some of the things that you were talking about, Piers, in the health space. If we have the ability to 3D print smart nanobots that can be directly put into the body and have the ability to self-replicate on their own, this could undoubtedly usher in an entirely new era of smart pharmacology, personalized medicine. When you look to a far out future, that starts becoming very interesting. And this is green to blue space. So let's rewind and take each part of this on its own. Doing green is now expected. No company, no product, no service, nobody can gain a leverageable competitive advantage anymore by just doing green, because it's expected. In order to play today, we have to do green. And so many consumers are trying to do green. They're purchasing their organic food, their solar light bulbs, their reusable bags. It is now fully permeated mainstream consumer consciousness. So no company can gain that competitive advantage. They have to migrate up, as I said in terms of the evolution of economies, they have to migrate up to the next value proposition. So when we move to doing green, to being green, the game changes a little bit. And being green is really the goal. And that is successfully, authentically, and holistically leveraging the value proposition of green and making it a fully intrinsic guiding principle. It's looking at your entire supply chain from where the product was created, how it was created, how it was shipped, how it was manufactured, how it was purchased, all of those things in this much more holistic framework. And